everybody doing out there? So, been a while since I've done any videos, so I thought I'd just go ahead and try this. I have a 212 Monster Moto, or Mega Moto as they're called now, and a problem I had occur the other night was the bearings in my jack shaft appeared to go bad. So I wanted to tear it apart, take a look at it. Looked around there for some videos on how to do this. I see nothing. So I thought, good time to try and start a little video and see if we could help some people out if they have the same problem. We're gonna figure out how to get these bearings changed over. So I will jump right into it, show you what we have going on here, and we can begin from there. Uh, 212 Predator. Monster Moto runs a CVT transmission, which is actually on the left side of the bike. We are over here on the right side. So I've already gone ahead and released the tension on the back wheel so I could get the chain off. And I now have my front sprocket here. And as you can see, I can move that thing all around in there. If we get in nice and close, we can see it really appears that we have a bad bearing. So, our next step here is we will remove the cover for our CVT on this side. Once we get that done, we will go ahead and try to get this jack shaft released so we can take a look at these bearings and see what we have to do to pull out maybe the outer part of those bearings. I took the case off on the other, the cover off on the other side, our CVT transmission. Uh, if you guys have not seen these before, this is what we look like. We have our belts here. If you do have one of these, you will have to eventually take these off to replace a belt. Um, the belts that come with them are not that great. The aftermarket ones tend to hold up pretty darn good. So I can tell here, I can shake this thing all the way around. So my jack shaft going through there, I have bad bearings for sure. So I'm gonna get out the tools and we are going to get this nut off, which is gonna have to be set on the other side. I might have to get some help here so we can hold the one, the nut on the other side while I get this off, otherwise it's just gonna turn on me. And I'll probably grab the impact wrench here and see if I can just uh, quickly bust this guy off so I can see how bad our damage is. I'm gonna have my assistant hold a ratchet on this. I'm gonna come around to this side and I am going to grab my impact wrench and I'm going to put my impact wrench on and we're gonna get this nut off of here. Our bolt off now. So now we're going to remove this so we can take a peek at what's going on. We want to make sure we don't lose that little key pin that is in here. As you can tell, we have the key right there. So we're going to go ahead and pull this off. Ugh. So now we're going to take off this little cotter pin here. We'll just use a little screwdriver, get under that, get, that pop, get this popped out. Once we get that popped out, then we should be able to pull out the shaft and see what we're looking at. Our jack shaft out here, you can see the sprocket. We just pulled it out on the other side. Obviously, we have a bad bearing. Uh, if all I got is the bottom end of the bearing, we'll come around here to this side. And let's take a peek at what we have going on here. I think my bearing, there we go. So we have some some seals in here, it looks like. Um, parts of the bearing, I'm sure it's gonna be down in this tube is the rest of the bearing. I'm going to go ahead and see what bearing we need to replace that. I believe that's all we have to do and we should be back on track. Unfortunately, my bearing was shredded and the race right here is jammed in there pretty good and tight. So I am pretty much resorting to right now taking my torch, heating it, heating it up a little bit, and then trying to tap it out. I don't want to 
really get too much heat on it. I don't want to warp the metal. Plus, I also am fairly close to my carburetor. I don't want to have to tear everything down. I have a full tank of fuel, so I'm just kind of hitting it a little bit. Getting it just slightly warm. Doesn't take too much. That grease is going to smolder a little bit. And then I will come around to this side. And just using whatever tool you can, attempt to kind of tap it out. It would probably work easier if I wanted to take this other bearing over here out, but for right now I'm just going to try to get that side out. And I have my race out now. A little bit hot. My race is out. Now I can prepare to put my new bearing in. Bearings out. What you're going to want to do is you're going to determine the size of your bearings. Uh, to do this, you're going to want to use a caliper. Now, for the, I'm sure most of you know what those are, but for those who don't, this is the little tool. Now, see mine is all rusty and kind of used up, been using it for a lot of years. Uh, they make digital ones, which are really nice. So what you're concerned with is you want to know what your inner diameter is, which is right here, your outer diameter, diameter, and then of course your width. Take your caliper. You want to go ahead and expand it with inside of here, and then look and find out where you're at. In this case, I am at 17 millimeters. You then want to check your outside diameter. And I am at, oops. My outside diameter looks to be 35 millimeter. And then you want to check your width. and my width is 10 millimeters. So, I got a 17 millimeter inner diameter, a 35 millimeter outer diameter, and a 10 millimeter width. You can look this up, uh, most of the time, if you get online, you can look up those millimeters of bearings, and there'll be a number associated with them. Just a standard number. In this case, I believe this is a 6003. Um, these are my new bearings, which I ordered. I did go with American made, because, you know, America. And I don't want the, why, why take the effort to tear it apart and then just put in the cheap junk bearings. Although these are not very expensive, they were just a few bucks each. So that's how you measure them. You can look up that number if you want, or you can just usually type in those measurements and find the bearings that you're looking for. If you're not specifically working on a Monster Moto and you might be working on some other machine that has a jack shaft or any other bearing for that matter. It, it, it applies to pretty much any bearing that you're using. You can just measure them up that way. My bearings out on each side. I tap this one out the same way that I tap that side out. And now it's time to get the new bearing in. In order to do that, it's a few steps. It can be kind of a pain in the butt. Myself, you're going to want something so that you can tap on the outer race of your bearing. You don't want to tap on the inner race, you'll end up wrecking your bearing. So in my case, I'm just using one of my impact sockets. It matches up nice and perfect. This is going to allow me to tap this into place without damaging my bearing. The other thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to take a little bit of grease. I just got some grease here and I'm going to grease the outer edge of my bearing. In my case, I'm just going to dip it right in here, just kind of get some grease on it, and then rub that grease around on the outer race. It's just going to help it go in easier. Now, the last step that we have to deal with is heating up our jack shaft again. So I'm going to take the torch, and I'm going to go ahead and heat this up a bit. Getting a little bit of expansion. So when I put my bearing in, I'm just gonna kind of heat it up. I don't wanna, I don't wanna melt anything. I just kinda wanna get it a little bit hot. Sometimes they say get it hot enough so you can have 
that water dances on it. I've heard that used. Um, obviously, if you're working around gas, you want to be a little careful. Um, you just kind of heat this up. If you're working around paint, if, the, if you have any items around your jack shaft that are painted, you want to be a little careful too because you don't want to mess up your, uh, your paint. So, I have this nice and heated. And now, to try and put my bearing in without burning my fingers, that's always lovely. So you're gonna take your, take your bearing, get it set, and you wanna make sure you go in square. If you do not go in square, you will have problems. So, I'm going to go ahead and grab my socket. I'm going to put it on my bearing and I'm going to start tapping just a little bit. Placing my bearing back into the jack shaft. So now, there was this little insert sleeve that came out of the jack shaft. I went ahead and greased it up, throwing a little grease down into my jack shaft hole. I'm going to go ahead and reinsert this so it's all nice and greased up and ready. I've got that in place. With that in place, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to pop my other bearing in. Since I didn't show you on the other side, I'm gonna have somebody help me here and hold that. I'm not gonna heat this up simply because I got all this grease in here. I'm gonna just go ahead and give this a little bit of a shot. And what you need to do it's kind of hard to get it started. If you can first get it started, I use my puller here to an extent. I know I said don't use the inner race, but I'm just using it just enough to kind of get it started here. If I can just get it started, then we can start tapping it in. So I'm gonna just try to get it started. There, just felt it go in. So now I have it in, just enough so we can start. Again, I'm using my socket, which will fit over the outer race. And I use my dead stop. And I'm just going to start hammering it in, making sure that I'm going in straight because you do not want to go in crooked, which it seems like I'm kind of doing here. I might have to pop this one back out. easy to go in that's for sure so we're just about in I think a couple more taps here and we will be set You never have to worry about going too far in because there's actually a stop in there that's going to prevent it from going in beyond its position. So, with that taken care of, I'm going to throw a little bit of grease. I'm just going to use the same grease I just for my grease gun, just nice and easier. And I got a little bit of grass it looks like on here. Wipe that gunk off, sitting on the dirty garage floor. All right, so make sure it's clean. Let me get a little bit of grease on here. Grease this up. There's already grease inside, so I'm not too worried about that. And now, we're going to go ahead and it's already out on the other side. I will go ahead and push it all the way through, 
tap it all the way in. And now, we now have our new bearings in, and as you can tell, our front sprocket is no longer flying all over the place. So I'm going to finish up putting everything back together. I have my CVT back on on this side. I now have my chain put back on on this side. It's just a matter of tensioning the wheel back, making sure it's even so that you have your chain not overly tight. You still want a little slack in it. And I'll put the covers back on and everything should be done. A quick idea of about where you want your chain tension to be. You should be able to move it slightly up and down. You don't want it too loose, but you don't want it too tight. So I usually go with about maybe uh, one inch from top to bottom, three quarters of an inch or so, just so it's got a little bit of play, but it's not completely tight. So I've gotten everything put back together now. We're gonna take it for a little test run and see how we did. Everything seemed to work fine. All right, all right, all right. Hopefully that'll help anybody who has to do the same fix. Thanks, and we'll see you again next video.